51 days, there's been a standoff between law enforcement and David Koresh. The religious cult leader will not back down. Neither will the FBI. On April 19, 1993, the FBI sends in tanks to insert tear gas into the compound with the aim of forcing Koresh's followers to leave. Instead, as the nation watches in horror, fire breaks out. We're looking at live picture of the Blanche Davidian complex near Waco, Texas. It apparently has gotten out of hand, John. They certainly didn't plan this. Uh, we just don't know what's happening to the people inside. We haven't seen them on our lenses coming out. This could be a, you know, an emulation of that whole group, so far as we know. Only so six men know. and three women are seen running out of the burning building. When I was looking there, they asked me, where, where is everybody? Where are the children? We don't see anyone on the We're waiting to see children. We were hoping that children would come out. The entire complex is on fire. And we watch those children burn. At 1225, bursts of gunfire are heard from inside the compound. Then it is over. 17 people are dead of gunshot wounds, including Koresh. Nine are buried alive when the building collapses, and 41 die from fire and smoke. Going forward, every person involved with Waco would be haunted by questions. Was the assault on the compound truly necessary? What would have happened if they had just waited it out? Nobody needed to die in Waco. Those agents didn't need to die. The Davidians didn't need to die. Certainly those children didn't deserve any of this. The death toll includes 20 men and 27 women, two of them pregnant. The bodies are too badly burnt to be sure, but at least 24 are children. The anonymous people that were in there were real people. They had family who loved them, and they loved their family. It's my mother. She wasn't crazy. She's a beautiful woman, and she didn't deserve to die. The four ATF agents who died in the first raid are also mourned. The deaths of these fine agents is a tragedy. <laughs> ABC. Good evening. We begin again tonight in the ruins outside Waco. There is our first view of the compound from the air. There is virtually nothing left anywhere on that compound. And the questions today, did it have to end the way it did? What about the children? There's an immediate public outcry about the way law enforcement has handled the crisis. Why did you do it at 10 o'clock Sunday morning in broad daylight? Within a month of the fire, a commission is formed to investigate. Mistakes and errors and judgment were made. The commission criticizes the ATF for the February 28th raid for choosing to arrest Koresh among his heavily armed followers. Why didn't we just wait until Mr. Koresh went to see his dentist or to have his car repaired or anything else? Why engage in a confrontation unless we must do so to protect human life? The commission also criticizes the final assault. Why use force? Crashing into the building, smashing into the roof, dropping tear gas, the fire assault. Why use these things when there is no indication of harm coming to human beings inside? David Koresh wasn't going to go anywhere. Much criticism also focuses on Attorney General Janet Reno. Nobody will ever know what the right answer was. And that I wish somehow or another I could wave a magic wand and know just how, in that particular case, it should have been done. Another criticism is the role the U.S. Army played at Waco. The military was far more involved in the ATF raid than was previously known, beginning months before the raid actually took place. It's illegal for the Army to participate in law enforcement, but the ATF wanted help for their big raid. 
The ATF was undertaking a mission larger than anything they'd ever done in their history. And they really did not have the tactical expertise. They did not have the command and control expertise. The ATF presented the Army with a long shopping list of military equipment, such as tents, trucks, gas masks, and night vision goggles. They wanted to borrow seven Bradley fighting vehicles like these. They also wanted the Green Berets, the Army's elite special forces, to critique their plans for the raid on the Branch Davidian compound. The OTF had no intention of any peaceable resolution. They intended to attack Mount Carmel. They wanted to have a big raid on TV. I'm not saying that, that uh, our government in general is, is up to no good. There's certain certain elements and certain people within those elements. It's not a bad and I know there are a lot of people, really hundreds of thousands of people, concerned about whether this has been a big cover up by uh, the Justice Department and even the FBI. The idea of a cover up makes Waco a rallying cry for right wing radicals who don't trust the government. They believe that law enforcement, either deliberately or inadvertently, set the fires that engulfed the compound. But the FBI releases audio tapes which show something else. Right before the final assault, microphones pick up the Branch Davidians setting the fires themselves. examined bodies at Waco that he found in a cement bunker. He said there were 31 mothers and children huddled shoulder to shoulder in the heat, covered with wet blankets. I think the women that were gathered in that concrete bunker with the blankets over their head, I think, I think they had true intentions of getting out of there. Twenty-five years later, Waco continues to fuel conspiracy. 